So good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's Tethering 101. Hi, Josh. I know I've got you sat waiting in the wings. How are you doing? Good, Jay. Thanks. How are you Excellent. doing? Really good to have you with us. No, it's great. It's been a while since we physically met, but it's uh, great to have you uh, online with us, uh, uh, supported, obviously, by our friends at Flaghead Photographic and Robert White. And obviously, in the wings, I know she's going to stay quiet for us tonight, but in the wings there, we've got Lauren on the question panel. So please, guys, obviously, if you've got any questions on tethering, please pop that through for us. Uh, Josh, maybe just should just tell us a little bit before I hand over the screen, unless it's part of your presentation, you know, tether tools and what it's all about. And obviously, we can now see... Uh, your, your beautiful face as well. Yeah, uh, please forgive my really old headshot. As Jay pointed out, that it's not a very accurate, uh, accurate representation of me anymore. But um, Tether Tools is in the business of helping photographers uh, take better photos. Usually, what that means is tethering them, uh, tethering your camera, which I'll go over to uh, a screen of some kind. Could be a tablet, could be a computer, could be a monitor, um, and then also the ability to mount. Uh, those p devices on set or on location to make sure that you have a seamless workflow. We're based here in uh, Phoenix, Arizona in the States, so forgive me if I call them tethering cables instead of tethering leads. But um, yeah, so it's sunny here and I uh, look forward to, to teaching you guys all about tethering. Brilliant, mate. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, well, look, I'm going to hand you the screen. Uh, so it's coming over to you now, Josh. Um, so as we said, please, uh, any questions you have for Josh and Lauren, please pop those through the question panel. Josh, you should be getting the screen request come through now. Can you guys see it? Yeah. yeah, we're all clear, full screen. We can hear you loud and clear. So Josh, it's all over to you, pal. All right, thanks, Jay. Uh, so yeah, the topic of today is increase your workflow efficiency, collaboration, and image quality, uh, obviously using tethering. I know that's kind of a big claim, but I wholeheartedly believe that if you use tethering in your photography, you will achieve all three of these uh, things. So as we move forward, um, what is tethering? Basically, like I mentioned, tethering is connecting your camera to a computer, a tablet, or a monitor to instantly view your images on a larger display. Now, one of the keywords here is instantly. Obviously, we can pull the cards out of our camera, slap it in our computer, and view it large. But you need that immediate and instant feedback as you're taking photos, as you're working with models, as you're on set with creative directors and others to know how the, how the photo session's going. Um, so there's quite a few situations uh, where I believe tethering is your best solution. So I'm almost going to talk more about when it's not. So if you're running and gunning, obviously tethering can be tough. Wedding photography, event photography. Um, some landscape photography might be tough to tether, although we do have a product for that, which I'll talk about. Um, otherwise, in almost every other situation, I would, I would say that tethering is going to uh, give you a, a better quality of image. Um, so why do we tether? Obviously, so we can see our images larger. That little LCD screen on the back of your camera lies to you all the time. I know we've all had this experience where we have a great session. We get back to the studio. We pop the card in the computer. And our favorite shots are just a little bit out of focus. They're good photos, but they're not great. And it's just a little bit. Maybe there's a small distraction in the background that is going to take a lot of work to Photoshop out. Uh, maybe uh, the composition just is wrong, or if you had turned that lighting just a little bit. Um, so all these things can be uh, perfected if you're tethering, because you can see the image much larger. And like I said earlier, you can see it instantly and get that feedback. The other big advantage of tethering is the workflow. So as you shoot, the image is being transferred physically from your computer to your, or from your camera to your computer. It's going into Lightroom or Capture One, whichever software you're using. You can tag it. You can add uh, metadata like your copyright. Uh, you can add preset filters if you want. Uh, everything's being date-based archived. So you're increasing your workflow. You don't have to stop later take the card out, put it in the camera, and go through that, all pro that whole process again. You're actually doing that while you're shooting. Um, and you're also creating a backup. You can um, have a hard drive connected to your laptop and use various methods to backup in real time. Uh, depending on which camera you use, you could be shooting to the card and to the camera. Um, so there's, there's different techniques there that you can use to backup images as you're shooting. Some of the other advantages to tethering is collaboration. Um, so I know a lot, of, a lot of photographers, they're shooting with a model or art directors on set or whoever's on set, take a couple pictures, they walk over, they show them the back of the camera, the little tiny two, three-inch LCD screen, and, and feel like they're collaborating. 
But with tethering, you can take that to a whole new level. Since the screen is large, you can show it from across the room. They could be standing together in a group huddle looking at it. So you can collaborate with your, your models on set, building a better trust, a better rapport. It's much easier to give them feedback if you're flipping through a few, a few photos and saying, you know, if you just move your elbow a little bit this way, I know it feels a little awkward, but look how good it looks on screen. Uh, items like that. You can collaborate with your makeup artists on set, um, hairdressers, uh, any creative directors or art directors you have on set. They can instantly see, you know, through the screen, the vision that you have through the camera. So they can be there. They can provide feedback or at least uh, trust in you that you know what you're doing um, and know what they're going to get when they get back to, uh, to build out their ad or whatever creative product they're producing. Another great feature is when you're working with parents, anyone who's done senior shots or, or baby shots know it can be challenging sometimes to have parents on set or on location. If you can get them a little bit away from the camera looking at the screen, they, they build their confidence there. Uh, that can be a, a liberating experience to you not having them sitting over your shoulder. So what do you need to get started tethering? Uh, it's really quite simple. There's, there's not a whole lot you need. Uh, a Tether Pro cable. Uh, which is basically a cable that connects your computer to the device that you're working with. Uh, you can also use a wireless transmitter, which I'll go over later. Um, some cable management to keep things neat, professional, and make sure your, your gear stays safe and secure. A uh, computer, obviously, or a tablet, or one that isn't on here but should be as a monitor. Um, and then software. So you do need software to shoot tethered. And most of our customers use Adobe Lightroom because they're on the Adobe uh, cloud it comes with the, the subscription um, but you can also use other ones there's ones like capture one um, smart shooter there's there's a, a myriad of options the probably the biggest question I get when it comes to software is can I use Photoshop well if you remember back I said one of the main advantages of tethering is to be able to see your images instantly while you can transfer photos from your camera to your laptop Photoshop doesn't have the built-in capability to open up that image in real time as you shoot. And so that's where a Lightroom comes in. And then once you get the images in Lightroom, it's easy enough to right click and say edit in Photoshop um, or go into whatever workflow you go. But you do need software um, to, to make this work. So first I'll talk about uh, the cables or the leads. Um, one aspect of tethering that's important is getting a quality cable that you can rely on. You hate to be on set shooting and have technical difficulties. That takes you out of your creative flow. Anyone on set might lose a little trust in you. Uh, so it's, it's important to use a quality cable. Uh, I don't want this to be a sales pitch, but Tether Tools makes our, call, our cables to the highest USB specs. And we make them a little bit thicker so that there's more insulation to protect against stepping on. Um, kinking if you roll over it with your c-stand or something like that it'll survive much better than than a cheaper cable the other important aspect is the length of the cable most cameras if not all cameras come with a little USB cable in the box but it's usually one uh, you know half a meter to a meter long it's not really going to do much for you uh, we sell up most of our popular cables at 15 feet or three meters um, to give you some space to move around and then we do have active extension cables to make it even longer and you'll notice on the active extension cable there there's a little box that's to help boost the the signal as it comes through and keep it strong because um, the quality of the data transmission is important there's a few different types of cables um, and then there are a few different ports or ends to each of those cables so USB 2 uh, is the more, most common cable, USB 3, you see a lot of the newer cameras coming in. Firewire is a little bit older cable. Um, so you need to make sure that you get the right cable to match your camera. Further, just because uh, you have the right cable, USB versus Firewire or something to that effect, you need to make sure that the port matches the camera port. So if your camera takes like the, the USB 2 that we see there on screen, you can't buy the USB 3.0 camera uh, cable right next to it and have it fit into your camera. So you need to make sure you pick the, the right cable. One tool that we've built out to help you is if you go to tethertools.com, we have this cable compatibility guide in the search by camera dropdown. From here, you can choose your, your camera manufacturer and the model number, and it will tell you exactly which cable you need.
So that's important. Um, we do have a lot of customers who, who don't realize that there are so many different cables. They buy the first one they see and then give us a call because it won't fit into their camera. If your camera uses a USB 3.0 cable, which is that flat tip that, that we saw back here on this screen on the right, there is one thing to be aware of. USB 3 requires more power than USB 2. And computer manufacturers are allocating power to their USB ports dynamically. So sometimes the computer doesn't allocate enough uh, power to that port in order to facilitate the uh, tethering session. Um, it's really noticeable at lengths of like three meters and, and longer. Um, so for that reason, we've developed this product called the Tether Boost Pro. Again, not trying to be salesy, but if you buy a USB 3 cable for your camera and you're not getting a good solid connection, it's probably because you need this Tether Boost Pro. What this will do is amplify the power, kind of uh, store it up for when it's needed, when the, the power drops from the laptop, to maintain that connection, make it reliable and stable. Um, it also reduces some of the battery drain on, on your camera. Uh, we have a powered option. You can see the extension lock to kind of keep it nice and clean, and you can even plug this into the wall. Most of our users don't need to plug it in, but if you're going longer distances, maybe uh, six meters, nine meters, something like that, then you might, uh, you might want to plug it in. So let me talk about the next piece, which is cable management. Um, the, the most important thing to take away from cable management when it comes to tethering is you want to keep your gear safe. You'll notice on that photo on the left, the cable coming out of the camera is connected with what we call a jerk stop or camera support. Now that will keep your cable plugged in, but more importantly, it takes the pressure and the strain off the USB port in your camera. Without that, if the, the cable gets jerked or you turn quickly, you accidentally step on it while you're turning and it pulls on that, that can damage that USB port. Uh, to get that fixed, you have to send your, your camera in to Nikon or Canon. Um, it's a costly repair. You're without your camera during that time period. Uh, so this little piece of equipment right here will save you a lot of heartache and pain. Uh, you'll notice it has a quick release. So you just leave one end always connected to your cable, one connected to your camera. Um, that way you don't lose the two pieces. There are also some L brackets and, and some of the newer cameras come with a little cradle that screws on. Whichever way you go, just make sure that you're protecting your, your uh, port on your camera as best you can. The other one you see there is for the camera or for the computer side, keeps that plugged in. Um, the, uh, the, the next factor for cable management is to reduce liability. And what I mean by that is you don't want anyone on set to trip on your cable, knock your camera over, um, cause problems. Uh, you know, you want everything to be safe and secure. So by using cable management, and these are just two pieces I'm showing. There, there are a myriad of options out there. Uh, you can find more at Robert White. Um, but you can keep your cables clean, sec securely connected, tied down, out of the way. Um, it looks more professional. It's l one less thing you have to worry about. Once you start doing this on a regular basis, it's just part of your flow. So you're, you're not like, where's this cable supposed to go? Because it's, it's clamped down, it's tied down. You know what it is, where it's supposed to go. So cable management really helps you be more efficient on set um, by, by keeping everything clean and secure. So protect your gear and reduce liability. Now I'm going to talk about an interesting use case of tethering. Uh, Joey Wright, or Joey Elf, photographer here, is doing um, a shoot for National Geographic. And he's using what we call multi-viewing. So he's tethered to a computer as he's shooting. But the angle that he needs for this shot requires him to kind of be able to see exactly what he's shooting. So he's, you can see also in the photo on the right, he's got a lot of other people on set looking at the computer. So rather than try and mount the computer super low and having everyone bend over and look at it, he's tethering directly to his computer. And then he's using, I think in this one, Capture Pilot to wirelessly send the image as it comes into the computer to his tablet, which he's able to easily mount down to where he's shooting from. So this is a, a, an interesting use case of using tethering combined with wireless to be able to get that shot that he may not be able to get as accurately as he wanted if he had to stop every few minutes, get off the ground, go look at the computer, 
come back, lie down. Uh, not only would that make a tiring shoot, but he may not end up with the photo that he thought he was going to get. So here you can see the final shot. He's down low, laying on his back, shooting up at her. Um, and then that's the final shot on the right. So turned out great for him. Another wireless option, there's quite a few other wireless options. Um, there's wireless cards. I'm sure we've all seen these little Wi-Fi cards that slide into the camera slot. Um, it's an SD card with wireless built in. You can use that to, to go wirelessly to a tablet or to a phone. Um, there is a drawback with those ones is they're small and they're in the body, so the Wi-Fi signal isn't as strong. Um, they also use the camera battery to power themselves, so they're putting an additional drain on the, the camera, the camera's battery while you're using them. Uh, the built-in, the camera built-in, attachable, uh, some enthusiast cameras, some of the newer high-end cameras, a lot of the Micro Four Thirds or the mirrorless cameras have wireless built into them. Again, uh, these take a lot of drain on the battery as you're using them. And probably the number one feedback we hear on these are the software just isn't that good. They, they've produced software that will work on a tablet or a phone. Um, you're able to see it as you shoot, maybe even control the camera, but your, your options after that are kind of limited. Connection typically is difficult to maintain or to set up in the first place. And then the last option that is the wireless transmitter, um, which we have a product called the Case Air. These are separate units that attach in through USB. They have their own rechargeable battery built in, so they're not draining the camera battery. Um, at least with our Case Air product, we have software for all the platforms, including desktop as well as mobile. Um, and because they're a separate unit outside the body, they tend to give a stronger Wi-Fi signal. Um, so in all these scenarios, what's happening is you take out your device, you attach it via Wi-Fi to the, the Wi-Fi option of your choice. So it'll create a little SSID, you connect to that, and now you're viewing images uh, on your tablet. Um, you don't need internet connection, you don't need to be connected to an external router, you can be out in the middle of, of nowhere and still use this option. So this is what I was alluding to earlier, this is actually a pretty good uh, solution for landscape photographers as well as studio and portrait photographers. The advantage here is it's a much smaller setup. You, you usually always have your phone and tablet with you. You can see the unit size itself is pretty small and there's no cable or computer to worry about. So there is there is a quite an uh, advantage to using a wireless setup. The disadvantage compared to a cable tethering session uh, is uh, it's going to be slower because everything's transferring over Wi-Fi instead of over a cable. So uh, just by the very nature of the technology, it's going to be much slower to, to send a signal over Wi-Fi than it is through a USB cable. And then secondly, you don't achieve those workflow efficiencies I talked about earlier. You're not going into Lightroom or Capture One. Uh, you're going into a dedicated app. So later, you're still going to pull your uh, card out and then put it in your computer. Now there is a workaround for that to kind of bring some of those efficiencies back in. Um, you can use what, what are called watch folders in Lightroom or Capture One to actually um, monitor a folder on your computer. It doesn't work with tablets, but if you're using a computer, sending the signal, the image from the Wi-Fi to the computer, then Lightroom or Capture One's watching that folder, and as soon as that image is downloaded to your computer, it'll open it up. So, and we have links here to, uh, to articles on exactly how to set that up. So there's a little bit of a workaround to get some of those efficiencies back. Um, but, so there's pros and cons. It, it's kind of like uh, any tool. There's a right tool for the right job. Sometimes wireless might make more sense for you. Sometimes a cable might make more sense for you. Uh, you just have to weigh those pros and cons, but both options are, are definitely available. So now that you've, decided to bring more hardware onto set, whether it's a phone, a tablet, or a computer, there needs to be a way to mount it. So here I'm talking about workflow support, basically creating a workstation on set or on location. A couple things, you wanna keep everything in arm's reach, make it easy to view. You wanna keep it safe. You don't wanna um, put your new MacBook Pro down on, the, on a rock on the ground or on the floor or precariously perched on an end table um, so we've got 
solutions for that to make sure that your uh, your workstation is nice and set up and, and safe. You want to keep everything organized, like I talk about with cable management, so that the cables aren't just going willy-nilly. Um, so we have table setups for laptops or, or even iMacs. We have tablet setups for Surface Pro, for Android, for iOS, uh, and then we have phone setups for, for any size phone. So it's really cre great to be able to create a nice workstation. Um, it's a kit of gear that you bring with you all the time. It looks very professional, and you get all the benefits of tethering, and, and you're not just having gear strewn everywhere. Another option is monitors. And here on the right, you can see Lindsay Adler. She's actually tethered to her laptop there where, where you can see her typing. But she's going from the laptop via an HDMI cable out to her monitor. So what does this do for you? It gives you an even bigger screen. Um, and monitors and televisions have gotten so inexpensive and so lightweight that bringing, a, uh, especially if it's a big shoot, bringing a monitor onto set or on location is, is not really that costly of a proposition. They're not very heavy, and they're, they're really easy to mount to C-stands and light stands using some of Tether Tools products. Uh, this is a great, great setup for collaboration. You can see here she's got three other people looking at the monitor while she's working on it, and it doesn't feel claustrophobic. No one's hovering over her shoulder. Uh, it's, it's great for collaboration. Uh, it provides easy viewing. Um, and then it's great for teaching. So if you are one of those types of photographers that does seminars uh, every once in a while, you have people come in, you're teaching them, this is a great solution to allow you to shoot tethered and give immediate feedback to those in the, in the audience or in your students to show them exactly what you're doing and how it's going. Uh, and it looks very professional. So when you're out there shooting with a big name brand or client and they see this kind of setup, again, they just have more implicit trust in what you're doing and that you know what you're doing. And the next time they need another, a photographer for another project, they're more likely to call on you because they know your setup is, is, uh, is special. So speaking of monitors, I'm going to transition a little bit into video. I know a lot of us, especially with DSLRs these, day, these, these days, will do some video work with their camera. And so you can tether for video just like you can for uh, uh, photography with a few minor differences, which I'll go over. First, if you're shooting video for a long time, power is going to become an issue. And so what we've built is called the Case Relay. It lets you power your DSLR, your mirrorless, or your micro four thirds off of a, any rechargeable USB battery pack or off of wall power. The nice thing about this is you, can, you may already have a, a lot of these USB battery packs, or you can invest in these way cheaper than you can invest in proprietary camera batteries. And if you ever do switch bodies uh, or upgrade and it uses a different battery, you're not then stuck with a whole bunch of proprietary batteries. You just simply buy a new coupler for your camera, the part that goes into your camera, uh, and you can continue to use the case relay system. There's also an attachment um, called the Sony NPF uh, coupler. So you can power some small video monitors. Um, there's a lot of different devices, LED lights, that use that kind of battery. Um, so it's, a, it's an adapter for that. The next piece of video is uh, this the HDMI cable and cable management. So if you're shooting video with your, with your camera, there's really two ways that you can tether. The first one is straight into the HDMI port on the side of your DSLR. Most, most cameras have either a, a micro, a mini, or a full-size HDMI port. You simply plug that uh, cable in there and then out to the monitor, and whatever you see on the back of your LCD screen is what you'd see on the monitor. So if you're shooting in live view or you're shooting video, you're going to see that video up on the monitor much larger. So again, you can check focus, make sure that if you're changing focus during your shoot, that you've, you've nailed the focus, check the composition, the lighting, the whole nine. Really nice to have a monitor on set when you're shooting video. The other way to use HDMI cables to a monitor is like I showed with Lindsay, is you go USB into the computer and then from the computer via HDMI out to the monitor. Now you can't use that workflow with video because there's not software that lets you actually tether your camera to your computer uh, to instantly view uh, video um, 
short of like webcam type stuff or um, that kind of workflow. So this is, if you're doing for video, you're usually going to go HDMI cable straight into the camera. If you're doing it for photos, you might go to the computer first and then out to the monitor. Again, just like in um, photography, cable management is going to be important, especially if you have a lot of people on set. We've got a lot of products uh, for that. Um, you just want to make sure everything's kind of tied down, nothing's loose, nothing comes disconnected. Um, you don't want to have to stop the, the, the shoot just to troubleshoot technology. So using cable management to keep everything in place, connected where it should be, uh, is a great, great tool. The last thing I want to talk to, uh, to you guys about on video is what we call Video Village. Um, this can separate your clients and your uh, other people on set from the actual video shoot, run longer cables from where you're shooting over to an area where you have a couple different monitors set up. They can view what's going on um, while you continue to shoot and work with the talent. Um, this is also a great place too. You could, you could set up another computer or laptop and have a place where people can review shots and video away from the shoot. So, you know, if it's a big shoot, you've got a lot of people on set, a lot of people with, with different areas of the shoot that they're interested in, this is one way you can create a little area for, for the people that need to review stuff while you're still out there working and shooting. So I know I've gone through quite a bit of things here in quite a, quite a quick fashion. We do have a lot of educational materials out there. There's a lot on tethertools.com. We also run a blog on tethertalk.com. Um, so you could check out both of those. We have a ultimate tethering guide. Uh, downloadable PDF. We've got a few how I got the shot guides where you can see example work of other photographers and they describe how they got it. Um, so we have a, a ton of educational material to help you through the process. It's really not that complicated, but as you start to get going, you might want to take it to the next step and then the next step and the next step. So these are tools that can help you get going. Like Jay mentioned, there's a discount code with Robert White. Um, he's going to email this out, so I won't spend too much time on it, but uh, definitely uh, if you're interested in getting started, I would uh, definitely take advantage of this. And with that, I'll uh, open it up to any questions that anyone may have. Yep, we've got some questions for you there, uh, Josh. Okay, so um, uh, Lauren's been answering loads for us, but she specifically left some ones that we thought that we should address uh, to, to everybody. Um, so the first one, they're not in any particular order there, pal, but the first one is, um, are there any updates for the case air? I seem to be having a few problems. Yeah, we've, we've rolled out a number of updates. Uh, we rolled out an update just about two weeks ago. So if you haven't got that one, make sure you download that. Um, and we're definitely uh, rolling those out in a regular, regular manner. Um, like any software, it, it's going to get better and better over time. It's, it's definitely really good right now, but uh, we hope to add new future, features um, and make sure that things like connecting to it is as simple as possible. Brilliant. Uh, okay, so I'm going to read these out. So a few of them are a little bit long-winded, Josh. So if you don't get anything from me the first time, just have me to repeat it for you. Um, I've right. tried to get Tether in to work with my MacBook. I'm using Lightroom 3, uh, but every time I try to connect to Lightroom, it just says no camera detected. Is this due to Lightroom being out of date? Any ideas? Uh, most likely. So when Adobe rolls out new versions of Lightroom, they add support for newer cameras but they don't retroly go back and add that support to older versions of Lightroom. So it's kind of an unfortunate thing, but that's Adobe's business model. Um, so if you search Lightroom tethered photography support, one of the first results will be Adobe's uh, page on which cameras they support. And on that page, it tells you exactly which version of Lightroom you need or greater. So if it says 3.0, that means you need 3.0 or newer. If it says 4.0, that means you need version 4.0 or newer. Um, so mo most often than not, that's exactly what the problem is. It's an older version of Lightroom with a, a somewhat newer camera. Um, you, you may think, well, my camera's a year old or two years old, but Adobe Lightroom 3.0 is like four or five years old. So um, you definitely need to look into that. Uh, brilliant. Okay, uh, okay. Is that the one we just did? Uh, okay. Importing a session to Lightroom will create a, a backup directory where one wishes. How can we do this when tethering? That makes sense. 
Yeah, so when you uh, start a tethering session in Lightroom, you'll, you'll go up to the file menu, you'll go down to start new tethering session, um, and a pop-up will happen. And that pop-up will ask you exactly where you want those files to be stored on disk. It'll also, also ask you if you want to add any metadata to it and, and a few other options. Now, it's important to remember that just like if you import it off the card into Lightroom, this is just the single spot where those images are going to be saved. If you want to do something more advanced backup, then you're going to need another piece of software. You could even use something like Dropbox and have Dropbox watch that folder and upload those images, or you could actually choose your Dropbox folder that you're saving it into. Obviously, that's going to require internet connection to transfer those up to the cloud, but that is one solution for backup. Um, if you download the Ultimate Tethering Guide from Tether Tools, we have a whole chapter in that guide about backup and backup solutions. Um, but just like your regular catalog, if you if you have that on a backup or like a RAID hard drive system, then it'll be it'll be backed up like all the other photos. Uh, brilliant. Okay, um, I'm already using Tether Tools for event printing, and the kit is faultless. Where I struggle is that I work with a two-man team, one taking pictures and the other making minor adjustments in Lightroom, um, for the client to approve for purchase. Uh, but every time I shoot, my last image is displayed on the laptop and interrupts the Lightroom workflow. I tether directly from Lightroom, uh, to, from Lightroom. Um, so it is a Lightroom question. Does that make sense? Do you want me to read it again for you? No, I got it. I got it. Th uh, first, let me thank you for using our products. Um, yeah, that's going to be tough if you're only using one computer um, because in Lightroom or Capture One or, or any tethering software I've ever used, it does take over. It needs to be the primary app, and, and it does kind of take over. Um, so that's going to be a challenge. Um, there's a couple of solutions. If you have another uh, computer with you, um, you could have it automatically transfer the files over, but that's going to be technically challenging. Um, so I don't really have a good solution for that. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, I think you'll probably just have to build something into your workflow where there's built-in pauses to do the editing, which is probably what you've already done. Uh, brilliant. Uh, does the Power Boost cable work with USB battery power packs? Um, I'm not sure I really fully understand the question. The, the Tether Boost Pro Boost Cable is only going to work when uh, tethering. It's, it's, not, it's not necessarily like uh, putting power into the line as much as it's storing power for when it's needed so that the connection doesn't drop. Um, oh, maybe the question is can you, instead of going to a wall outlet with that, can you go to a USB battery pack? The answer to that question is yes. So if you need to power the Tether Boost Pro with additional power, so maybe you're going with a longer lead, um, then you can either plug into the wall or you can plug into a USB battery pack. So I'm not sure if I answered that question or not, but um, maybe that's what they're asking. Okay, well if the person's online, if, and if Josh didn't answer it correctly, if you can just pop that back through the question panel, I'm sure we can get that cleared up. But I think it was, I think it was a case of using external uh, USB power packs, I think. Um, but we'll, we'll see if they chip back in. Um, where was I? Uh, okay, does the Tether Boost, um, I got to read this. See if I've got it right. The Tetherboost TBPro.org.uk Pro Core controller do the same job as the Tether Pro USB 3.0 Super Speed 5 meter with reference to the Power Boost. That was a bit techy for me. Did you get that? Yeah. So I think basically the question is: is the extension cable uh, that we have boost the power like the Tetherboost Pro? The answer to that is no. That the, the the extension cable won't add any more power into the line. The little repeater on the end there basically just takes the signal that's coming through and um, amplifies it, but doesn't add power. So you still need to use the Tether Boost Pro, even if you're using an extension cable. Uh, Hello? Can you hear me, Josh? Sorry, I yeah, muted. Yeah. I muted myself by accident. Sorry, but uh, okay. Uh, so look, I cannot find those details anymore. Computer 
do start wraps in this? Oh, okay. So somebody was asking um, about uh, they were on our UK tour last year and met uh, Hardy from Flaghead and Robert White. So it, it is it's uh, it's uh, Hardy Hass at uh, Flaghead.co.uk is the rep to get in touch with, or of course through Robert White. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Um, I uh, let's have a look. Um, okay, so I think this is to do with the updates with regard to the case Air, Josh. Uh, somebody said that they have downloaded the updates. Uh, they're both on an iPad on Windows 10, but still lacking some features. Is that is that is that something we talked about earlier? Is that in the mix in the in the in the fix? Uh, what I would recommend is if you uh, email us directly at customer service at tethertools.com, we can look at exactly what you're having a trouble with, and uh, we're. One thing that we pride ourselves as a company on is our customer support. So we have dedicated people to to receive your emails and answer those emails and follow up with you directly. So please feel free to use customer service at tethertools.com with any questions, not just about the case error, but in tethering in general, certain cameras, any kind of troubleshooting you might need related to, to tethering. Brilliant. Um... So look, where am I? Okay, uh, Capture One Pro supports older cameras as well as uh, for tether and shooting, uh, like my Canon One DS Mark uh, Three. Can you uh, can you explain tether and shooting to the Capture Pilot? Yeah. So basically, you still use uh, Capture One. So you're tethered from your camera into your computer with the cable with the lead. Um, there's a add-on product that you can download from the App Store. Uh, I, I know iOS, I believe Android too. And what will happen is when you use that product, you'll connect via Wi-Fi from your mobile device to your computer. And then just like with the wireless tethering, as you shoot, it goes into Capture One, and then that transfers wirelessly to the app on your iPad or your iPhone or your tablet so that you can review it from there. So um, it, there's, there's even a little bit more delay than the normal wireless because it's going through the wire, it's being read in by Capture One and, and presented in Capture One, and then it's going wirelessly out. But um, it, it is a good solution that, that works well. Uh, great. Um... Uh, somebody's just chipped in. I don't know if this is relevant, Josh. Um, there is an action in Lightroom that stops the new image from interrupting workflow. I think that was to do with the two-man shooting thing earlier, was it? Oh, good. I'm not even aware of that, so that's that's a good piece of information. Thanks. Um, that one's for me. I'll address that one afterwards. Thank you for the Teleboost Pro answer. There's quite a large price difference between the two cables. Uh, okay, so I think that's just a statement. Uh, that's all the questions that have come through the question panel for you there, Josh. Um, I have quickly scanned any of the questions that uh, came through on the registration, but I think a lot of them we've entered, but I'll just quickly scan them, make sure we haven't missed anything. Uh, nothing about what is the internet. Um, and I would say while you're looking, Jay, um, if you do have that the little cable that came with your camera and you do use Lightroom or Capture One, you can go ahead and try it out. It's not going to be very, uh, uh, very easy with a short cable, but at least you can get a sense of what it's like. You plug that cable in, plug it into your computer, launch the software, especially if you're on Canon. Canon comes with the Canon EOS utility, so that's in the box as well. And try it out and see uh, what it's like to shoot tethered. And then from there, then you can upgrade to the longer lead, to the jerk stoppers, uh, to all the other products. But uh, at least that way, you can kind of get a feel for how things are going to go. Uh, brilliant. Um, I'm not sure if we've already addressed this in your presentation, Josh, but I'll just uh, I'll just ask it again, just in case. Um, can you connect the D3X uh, to an iPhone to see the viewfinder in low-level images? Um, does that the make only sense? way to do that? Yeah, the only way to do that would be uh, wireless through something like the Case Air. So whereas with Android and uh, Microsoft Surface, where you can actually USB into the device, uh, Surface Pros have a, a real USB port. Android, you can use an, what's called an OTG adapter to reverse from a, a big USB into the small one of the device. Uh, Apple doesn't let us do that with their Lightning port. Even though they do have a Lightning to USB, it, it won't work to to try and shoot tethered. So the only way you can go to an iOS device currently in a, in a tethered setup is through wireless. Um, so that I would recommend the case there. Brilliant. Um, actually, this is quite a good question, Josh. I mean, you know, we, I, I'm sure you addressed it right at the beginning, but why tethering over shooting wirelessly? Well, there's a, there's a couple reasons. Um, the, the first one is speed. Um, if you're shooting tethered, it's gonna transfer the computer much faster than if you're shooting wireless. Um, 
So that, that's usually the deciding factor for most of our uh, professionals. The second one is workflow. If you're shooting tethered, you're going into the software that uh, probably most likely at the end of the day you want to be in already anyway, whether that's Lightroom or Capture One or, or some other tethering software. So you're, you're killing that bird with two stones. You're, you're shooting the picture and importing it at the same time. You can add the metadata, have it archived, have it cataloged, um, do any presets. Um, so it's really the right tool for the right job. Um, the one thing we didn't really address on um, wireless is the raw um, transfer. If you went to transfer a raw file of a wireless, it's going to take, depending on your camera and the, the megapixel, it can take 10, 15 seconds to transfer a raw image. So usually what we recommend is you shoot JPEG plus RAW, you preview all the JPEG images, and at the end you take the card out, put it in the computer, and, and transfer the, uh, import the RAW files. Um, but if it's really important for you to have those RAW files on your computer right away, then the only real um, feasible way to do that is with a, a lead. Brilliant, mate. Um, okay, so this is just your general opinion. With the tethering, is there a better software than others? So is it Lightroom? Is it Capture One? Is it something that works better than others in your, in your opinion, your practice? Sure. So in my experience, I prefer Capture One over Lightroom. I'll tell you why. Um, Capture One was built by Phase One from the ground up to be a tethering software. So it's much faster um, during the whole process. A lot of Lightroom users uh, lament about the speed of, of the application, especially when it comes to tethering. Um, Capture One has done a fantastic job integrating in all the editing tools um, that you find in a Lightroom product. A lot of our professionals even think they're better uh, than Lightroom. Um, and the, the, the last one is you can control all the camera settings in Capture One. So you could actually be at the laptop and not only just press the shutter button, which you can do in Lightroom, but you can change your aperture, your shutter, your ISO. You can even pop into Live View right there in Capture One. Um, the only thing you can do in Lightroom is press the shutter button. Now, with that being said, so many of our customers are on the Creative Cloud, and for them, I always recommend start with Lightroom because they already have access to it. More, more often than not, they already know how to use it. Um, it's the easiest place to start. So um, once you get, if you don't have Lightroom, I recommend checking out Capture One. If you have Lightroom, use it. And once you hit some of these limitations, then maybe check out Capture One. Capture One does have a 30-day um, uh, trial offer, so you can try it for 30 days. The other important note, too, is Lightroom only supports Nikon, Canon, and some Leicas, which is interesting. But they do not support Sony. Um, Capture One does support Sony, and Capture One also supports like digital backs and, and a few other products out there. So uh, depending on your camera, that, that choice might be made for you. Um, there are, manufacturers are getting better about releasing Lightroom plugins um, for it. I know Fuji has one, Panasonic has one uh, specific for Lightroom. Um, so just investigate which software uh, your camera is supported by. Um, but if you're Canon or Nikon, then the choice is, is usually between uh, Lightroom or, or Capture One. Uh, well, from our point of view here at, uh, at the Photography Academy, we were Canon, we're Canon users. Um, and up until about two months ago, we were using Lightroom. And then we discovered Capture One, and we will never go back. Uh, to be honest, if that's for just uh, we 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 had numerous problems with Lightroom. Capture One's given us no problems, so if we just thought I'd chip in with that on on that, Josh. Also wanted yeah. to um, remember when you were talking about uh, in your presentation um, about obviously the reason that we use tether, tethering cables and specifically your jerk stop and things like that. We we probably repaired our, our cap before we we found you guys. We must have had two of our our units repaired about four times the USB. Due to, to the tether cables that we were using, and it was very, very expensive. And then, uh, of course, we met. Uh, I think we met Lauren uh, out in the U.S. when we happened to be working out there uh, and discovered uh, tether tools and never looked back. So even just the the, the short, you know, the small uh, jerk stopper can just save you so much money in the long run, if nothing else. So the cable and the jerk stopper is, is you know, saved us 
well, say Mark and, well, and to Debbie's relief because she pays all the bills around here. Uh, but, Mark, you know, we were often sending the cameras away to be repaired. So uh, she thanked us no end when we found uh, when we found her the tool. So I just wanted to chip that in before I forgot because when you mentioned it earlier, I knew the repair bills that we were getting were ridiculous. Um, so, you know, you've saved us a lot of money over the years. I'm just scanning the questions, Josh. I think we're almost there. Um, I'm just, there was one here, and I'm not sure if I can understand the second part right, but a gentleman has, has bought, well, he uses Canon 5Ds, and he's purchased the Case Air wireless system and a Tether Pro USB uh, 3.0 cable and jerk stopper. Um, he's asking, I think, uh, when he gets started, is it easier to use the laptop in tethering, or would he go straight to the Case Air and on the iPad and the iPhone? Is it just going to be tools for the job again? Yeah, I think it's a tool for the job. I, I don't know if I would say one is easier than the other. Um, I will say with the cable, you don't have to mess with any Wi-Fi um, uh, settings, but but really we're all used to, to connecting to different Wi-Fis at this point, so that's not very challenging either. So I, I would just say try them both and see which one you like better, and I'm sure you'll find some are one is better than other for certain shoots and the other is better for others. Uh, brilliant. I, I said, well, I went back to the initial questions, but we have got a few more coming through on the chat panel. So let's just uh, round up with those. Uh, where am I? So it's just right. OK, uh, I'm totally new to all of this. What would be the best setup out on location in the mountains, photographing wildlife, weight being an issue? Um, if weight's an issue and you're, you're hiking in, hiking out, I would definitely recommend the wireless solution. Like I mentioned earlier, you do not need any kind of Wi-Fi router, it's going to create its own hotspot, and especially outdoors um, where there's no, you know, no signal interference or anything, Wi-Fi can go for a very long distance. So one of the, the cool things you can do there is you can set your camera up in a location that maybe it's not feasible for you to stand there and, and shoot, and then you can maybe go sit down in the shade or something and control all your camera settings through the wireless app, press the shutter button through the wireless app, do time lapses uh, or videos through the, the wireless app um, and not having to be right there next to your camera. Um, that might even be great if you want to, you know, put it up on a high boulder or a rock or who knows, but it gives you some, some freedom. And really the only weight you're carrying in at that point is your, your tablet or you could use your phone, uh, your camera, the, the case air weighs next to nothing, uh, and then probably a good tripod, I would imagine, um, and you're good to go. Uh, brilliant, mate. Uh, where am I? Yeah, so look, so looking there. That's okay. Looking at, I'm looking at getting the case, case air, but I noticed that it plugs onto the flash hot shoe. What if you have a trigger fitted? Is there an alternative alternative mounting method? That's a that's a great question. One we get all the time. So the hot shoe mount is just a a nice place to put it, but it doesn't require the hot shoe mount in any way. So it's just a plastic base. It comes with a little tether leash, kind of like our jerk stopper camera support. So you can just hang it right off of where your strap connects, uh, even with your strap still on there. Um, you could get a longer USB cable and put it in your pocket. It's got a quarter 20 on the bottom, so you could even mount it you know, with a, a quarter 20 spigot on the bottom of the camera. Uh, some pocket wizards have a female quarter 20, so you could mount it right onto your pocket wizard. Um, so it, it doesn't use the hot shoe. It's just a convenient place to, to put it. But if you're using a trigger, uh, yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can mount it, and you'll find a lot of that on our Tether Talk blog at tethertalk.com. Uh, brilliant. Can, uh, this is more of a Lightroom question here. Josh, I don't know if you know the answer. I'm not a Lightroom user, so I don't know. But can the picture be made full screen in Lightroom when tethering into Lightroom? Uh, yes, it can. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think you can go into full mood. I think even if you just hit the the tab key, it hides all the other panels and just puts you in full screen. Yeah. Well, before we switch to Capture One, of course, we tether to Lightroom. So yeah, when you when you when you tether to Lightroom and you, you turn it into Tether Watch, and you have the option to set up your, the the way it's viewed on Lightroom, and we would always show the main image that the that the most recent image captured as full screen, and then there'd be like small thumbnails for the rest of the images. So it's just definitely in the way that you set up your viewer in Lightroom. Uh, so I answered. Oh God, I answered a question, Josh. That's the first. There you go. Um, okay. How do you execute color management when you're tethering? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, there's a a, a lot of those uh, monitor calibration um, tools you can use. Um, so I, I assume on the monitor side, I would use one of those, like a spider monkey or something like that, to calibrate my monitor or my screen. Uh, on the other side, you know, you could use a color checker, an X-ray color checker, or something like that. Um, so I'm not sure if I answered that question, but uh, those are the two ways you could color calibrate on each side. 
We have a question here about the uh, your, your uh, Aero platform. Um, how's the la yeah. how is the laptop secure to pre prevent it from being pulled off? Um, so the, we we sell an accessory called the Secure Strap, which is an elastic band that um, connects edge to edge on the table and goes over the laptop. Um, obviously, if you have your laptop on a tripod or a C stand or a light stand, given enough force, you can knock it over. So I'm not going to stand here and tell you that, that it's impossible. But, um, you know, we've been in business for a long time, and, and we do not get regular reports of people dumping their laptops onto the ground. It's just something that you tend to take care of. We definitely recommend using sandbags whenever possible on your, on your, on your stands, um, but it typically isn't an issue. Uh, but the secure strap is what I would recommend uh, to, to just make sure that, like, when you're walking around and you've got the cord connected, that it doesn't just pull it right off the table. We um, also have a pro pad that, pro, sorry, Jay, that provides just a little bit of uh, padding and friction, so it's not just like on a, a slick piece of metal, if that makes sense. I was going to say we use the strap, uh, your secure strap, uh, in our in our setup here. And of course, if we are out on location, then we take the sandbags with us. But we don't find uh, that we have that much trouble when we're in the studio. It's only if we're un uneven and you know, and the weather and the ground that we do, we even worry about the sandbags. But uh, we don't have any. But so perfect for that. Um, so the, okay, this is I don't know. Uh, this is nothing I don't understand. I'll ask the question, and if, if you're not sure, uh, what are your thoughts on? Um, soffit build if that means anything to you at all Josh because it doesn't mean anything to me yeah that's a, a piece of software out there honestly I've never used it we do we have a software section on our website it's listed on there um, it's it's not um, I don't want to say it's not very popular it's not a software we get a lot of questions on so I'm not very familiar with it Okay, brilliant. Um, I'm currently shooting events wirelessly uh, and can view the photos on my Nikon as I go. Can I view the camera if I shoot tethered to a Mac or a PC? Can I view on the camera? Oh, so can I? Can so what they're asking is, will they still see the back of the camera while they're tethered as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, you can move around and shoot like normal. Um, Brilliant. Uh, okay, uh, I think we're almost there, mate. Uh, sorry, I'm new to this, but I'm tethering to an iPad as I only have a Mac desktop, not laptop. Am I viewing the tethered image on the iPad? Does it save it there or just to view it uh, as it's limited memory on the iPad? Sure, it gives you the choice uh, in the settings whether you want to uh, save every image or not save every image. If you choose to not save every image, then each image that comes in then you can choose to save that one individually. There's also um, complete card management in the software so that um, even if you shot photos without using the wireless system, once you connect the wireless system, you could download any image that's on your card to your iPad. So yeah, it's a safe space. It doesn't automatically download all the images, although there is a setting to allow you to do that. Um, so and you, can, you just choose which images you want to download. Uh, brilliant, Josh. That is the last of the questions for tonight, mate. So uh, loads came through there, so we thought we'd have quite a lot of questions. So uh, uh, we had perfect timing as well. So we're, we're just under 8 o'clock. And obviously a big thanks to Lauren, who I know has been answering questions left, right, and center, and she's sort of pointing me to the right ones to address for the whole group there. So, But of course, uh, as you mentioned, that any questions that you have, obviously go to tethertools.com. They can get in touch with you and ask any of you support questions there. And of course, that goes for um, Flaghead and Robert White obviously over here in the UK as well and please you know if, if you're having trouble getting in touch with them or if you can't remember how to do that just get in touch with me at the Photography Academy and I will happily relay uh, your information and your questions to, to Josh or, or to Hardy at Flaghead for you. Uh, Josh thank you so much for your time uh, I know Lauren's in the, in the wings there uh, quietly but again thanks uh, to her also. Uh, great to have you with us. I know we're also going to look at some featured photographers over the next few months in these webinars and they're going to be talking about their work but how uh, tethering has been so important in their workflow as well. So um, we're going to get a little bit more detailed over the next few months. And uh, also we've been discussing today that uh, uh, you're going to um, do a feature for us uh, each month in, in the new digital magazine for us as well, Josh, so uh, we can keep everybody up to date with everything that's going on in the tether world. Great work. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, tuning in. I hope I answered all your questions. And like I said, if you have any other questions, definitely customer service at tethertools.com. 
Absolutely brilliant. And of course, guys, don't forget, if you're interested in any of the products we've talked about tonight, um, Robert White is giving you a 10% discount on the Tether Tool products. Uh, the link's in the chat panel, and you will get a follow-up email from me tomorrow with the code and everything. So just go over to their site, um, and you can find all the information and all the uh, purchase of the stuff that we've talked about tonight. And again, their support is excellent, as well as uh, getting your questions over to uh, to Josh or the guys at Tether Tools if you've got any queries on what you need to get uh, the right piece of kit for the tools on that. Uh, so just a couple of quick reminders, guys, and I also wanted to address a point that Ian made earlier when I was talking about our UK uh, roadshow. Uh, yes, I appreciate that at the moment we're not going to be in Wales or in Scotland. Uh, that is going to be changed, Ian. We will be uh, doing the Headshot Roadshow in Wales and in Scotland, but it won't be in June. It'll be later in the year, and we'll keep you posted as soon as we have dates on that. But if you can make any of the actual dates that are scheduled at the moment and you want to book a place on the Headshots Roadshow, then just go over to the Photographer Academy and on the live events section you'll find the booking page and again the link will be in the follow-up email that I send you tomorrow and in the chat panel and as I said don't forget the new brand new magazine available now to, to view or download online two issues available now and the third issue will be going live this week it's looking fantastic I already had a sneaky peek today uh, of the design so uh, people loving that and as we said uh, Tether Tools will be going to be featuring that as of next month also so you can get that from the dashboard page on the Photography Academy or from the links that I've sent you through and of course don't forget my special offer uh, for you um, on the Photographer Academy. If you are looking to join, you can join tonight for just £30 for the next 24 hours. Uh, the link is in the panel and on the email that I've sent you through tomorrow. Uh, Lauren, Josh, thanks again for tonight, mate. Uh, well, you're just starting your day uh, and mine is coming to an end. So thank you so much for joining us uh, from Phoenix and uh, clearly won't be uh, the last time that we uh, have you uh, online with us, mate. All the best. Well, thanks. We'll yeah, we look forward to the next time. Excellent. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, guys. Well, you guys have a good day. I'm going home and uh, going to enjoy the rest of my night.